way that I'm tipping. I walk with the mop, a nigga be drinking. Grow up, switch the house, I had my nigga. But I roll big bag, what's on my face? Do you want? What is your wish? You nigga want? come shot, so you got some attention. Double back, shorty don't know what's up in it. Walk a dude, PB, them packs, I was hanging. Hey, you, know you know it. Burberry Cologne should be on it. Slashing my lenses, I'm low. You hating my dick, you can hold it. Here, the point is focused. Yo. Little nigga mad cause he won't. Hello, hi, what's good? My name is Kyra. If you already knew that, then welcome back to my channel. If you didn't know, then welcome to my channel. I cannot believe it's literally been like seven months since I've uploaded a nail video. I am appalled, I am ashamed, I am distraught that it took me that long just to edit because I've had videos just sitting ready to be edited and ready to be seen but either way let's not start rambling let's just go ahead and get into what we're actually doing and excuse my little dirty nails i don't know why my nails are so dirty but it's okay because they're gonna get cleaned and fixed as you can see i'm using a cuticle pusher to push down my cuticles when you do this the whole goal is to remove that sticky white stuff off your nail plate so what you want to do is use the cuticle pusher in a circular motion to get that sticky stuff up off of your nail plate and then of course i'm using the other end to go ahead and clean off any of that dirt that was underneath my free edge any shine you may see on my nail plate is definitely just gel top coat um, I had my nails off for about two weeks before I did this set, so I just put a little bit of top coat as a protective barrier layer, but I will file that off as you guys will see. So as you can see off camera, I did two things. I went ahead and laid the acrylic on my right hand. It's not filed or anything like that, and it looks a little wonky because I did use nail forms to go ahead and build out this set. Not a tip was used. Of course, it's not the cleanest application, but it has been a while since I've done forms, especially on myself. So bear with me. It will be beautiful once they are filed. And then obviously, on the other hand, I went ahead and removed all of that gel top coat that was there. Now, clearly, I'm grabbing my nail forms. I honestly got these Venus ones from Amazon. I truly do like them. I like the length of them. I like that they feel sturdy and they are a good stickiness. They definitely fully adhere to my nails without feeling like they're going to fall off. I always take that little centerpiece out and put it right above where it initially comes just because I feel like it adds an extra level of stability to the nail form. And again, excuse my mess, my messy right hand, the messy sticky acrylic that I got on the form, all of that. Again, I just did my right hand, which means I was using my non-dominant. So it's always a little bit messier when you're using your non-dominant hand. As you can see, now I'm just fully adhering the nail form to my finger and shaping it into the shape that I would like. Once your nail form is on, your next step is to determine how long you want it. So that's what all the little numbers on the nail form are. It kind of is a guide for the length. It also, some of them have letters, say like medium, long, XL. Now, earlier when I was saying that I already prepped this hand, I did go in with my sanding band and remove all of that shine and old gel. And of course, as you guys know, I removed my cuticles and pushed down my cuticles. But I did not already go in with bonder and primer. So that's what I'm doing right now. So when doing forms, I like to do one finger at a time. I just feel like it's so much easier without the length of the forms getting in the way. Just like normal when plying acrylic to tips, you always want to start with right where your free edge and then that extender meets. So I say extender because obviously these are forms and not tips, but it would be right where your free edge and the form meets or right where the free edge and the tip meets. And with forms, I like to go ahead and build out that length just because there's not already a tip or a base down there. So you kind of don't, you're starting from nothing. So I like to go ahead and lay that length so that way the acrylic can start to harden into the shape and the length that I want my nail to be. Of course, once you have the base for your length, you can start building the nail up. So as you can see, of course, I'm looking to the side, checking to see how my apex is looking, checking to see if I have any gaps or inconsistencies that I need to fill in with acrylic. And clearly I did. <laughs> I've always been somebody that likes to work with my acrylic a little bit more wet, especially using a form, which I know kind of doesn't make sense because it could drip down the form. I just feel like it's so much easier to move it to the place in the length that I need it to be instead of it drying and setting in one spot and then I kind of can't move it and I have to keep adding and adding and adding and having it get lumpy. I feel like just having it wet is just so much easier for me to just blend it down the length of the nail and just have everything smooth and seamless. I will say that pinky came out a little thicker than I initially wanted, but it's totally fine. It's nothing filing, cannot fix. On to the ring finger. Of course, I'm going back in with my bonder and then my Young Nails Protein Bond. Like I did earlier, I'm starting my first acrylic bead right where the free edge of my natural nail and the end of the form meet. 
Honestly, I'm just taking time to make sure that the width of my natural nail matches the width of the form. If you don't fully cover that sidewall, your nails will be so much more prone to breaking. And then again, your next step is to build out that length. Take an extra bead, put it right at the tip of where you just finished your last bead and end it right where you want your length to end. To make it extra smooth, you can always dip your brush back into the monomer and do like a feathering motion backwards to go ahead and blend that acrylic with the acrylic that's starting to harden. So once I feel like the tip of my nail is structured the way that I need it to be, I start going in and building that apex and starting to build the acrylic to my cuticle. So I went ahead and laid the acrylic on my other fingers off camera and I also filed my right hand off camera and on camera I'm obviously going to file my left hand. First things first, I always go in with the hand file just to get that shape defined. I'm trying to get my stiletto sharp and I'm also trying to get rid of any of that acrylic that might have dripped down the form, causing my shape to be a little irregular. As you're going to see for this set, I used a hand file twice, once before the e-file and once after. So obviously this is before the e-file, so I'm not going in with 100% perfect the shape that I want it to be, just because I know I still have more filing to do afterwards. Once I finish hand filing, I always go in with my fine grit ceramic safety bit. This just helps to smooth the surface of the nail just in case there was any unevenness during my acrylic application. It also helps to get rid of like any scratches that might have been caused during the filing process. And the most important part, it helps to blend your natural nail to the fake nail. So that little cuticle area, it makes it look nice and seamless. My biggest tips for e-filing after the acrylic application is to number one, always use a fine bit unless you're trying to remove bulk of the acrylic. So if you made your nails too, too thick, of course, you can go in with a more coarse bit to remove all that bulk. But if you're just trying to smooth them out, go in with a fine bit. Shoot, I guess it's good that I brought up filing twice since I did not show it in the video. I went ahead and used the hand file after that e-filing and then I washed my hands and now I'm just cleaning off the surface of my nails with alcohol to make sure there's no oils or anything left on my nails so I can go in with my polish. As you probably saw from my thumbnail, we're doing a cute little black crocodile moment so I'm using Honey Nail Secret Black Gel Polish. I love this polish because it's super pigmented, but I will say a few of the shades, if you polish them on too thick, they will get wrinkle and peel off. If you can't tell, I am going in with a really thin coat of this polish. You can see it's a little sheer through the tip. I just don't want it to be thick. Of course, I will go in with two coats. And don't mind that pink tint of color on my other hand. As you guys know, I'm a nail tech that takes clients. So sometimes I'll take clients in between doing my own nails and in turn their polish or glitter or whatever may transfer over onto my nails but of course we're using black so it'll be covered no worries also if you're wondering why it took me like 20 minutes to paint my pinky it's because again i was using my non-dominant hand so it just takes me so so much longer but i'm dipping my cleanup brush into acetone and i'm just cleaning up the sides and then i always use my finger to go ahead and clean up the back of the tip as you can see so as you can see, I finished my right hand, my dominant hand, and I went ahead and covered it with a matte top coat. And now I'm just polishing my left hand. If you can tell, there are a little bit of inconsistencies in the polish. Like my black did definitely wrinkle a little bit, but honestly, with the design that I'm doing, it's not that big of a deal. You can't tell. But if this was a client, that would be something that I would fix. I would have honestly just took all the polish off and redid it just because you don't want to risk the chance of the polish peeling off. Black nails just do something to my soul. They look so beautiful before I put the top coat on. So shiny. I just had to show them off. So just like my other hand, I'm going in with my Honey Nail Secret Matte Top Coat. Most of the time when you're doing nail art, it's always a good thing to go in with a matte top coat just because it's super easy to clean that design off if you're having any difficulties. So once your nails are all matted up, all you're going to need for the art itself is a no cleanse top coat. I'm using the Nail Supply Glamour Diamond Gel because it's a little bit of a thicker top coat. And then I was just saying I actually left that nail blank because I'm going to be doing bling on that nail. And then of course, I'm just wiping the surface of my nails with alcohol just to ensure that there is no dust or any particles on them. The design itself is honestly very, very simple. I just took a liner brush 
and I use horizontal lines to go across just the middle of the nail. I don't want to go across the whole nail surface because of course I will be adding in smaller horizontal lines in between the gaps. Also earlier when I was saying it's smart to use a thicker top coat, it's just because of course you're trying to achieve that 3D effect. So the thicker your top coat is, the more 3D effect you will get. And like I said, it's important to use a no cleanse top coat because you're going to constantly have to go in and out of the light and do more and more top coat. So it's really nice to not have that sticky layer or have to worry about using any alcohol to clean it off. Once you finish with that middle section, it's time to cure. I like to just flash cure for like 10 to 15 seconds so that way I can get back to working. And then like I said, I just do smaller horizontal stripes in between the gaps of my other ones. And then of course, you gotta do the same thing on the other side of the nail. You can do it as many times as you want or make the lines as big or little as you want or as thick and wide as you want. Really customize the design to yourself. And keep in mind, the lines don't have to be super perfect or uniform. Like, of course, you're trying to mimic a reptile print and no reptiles are alike. So, again, really customize the design to yourself. I personally wanted the whole nail to be covered from sidewall to sidewall. So I went in with a little bit more tiny baby lines to fill in any additional gaps. I feel like you guys were able to get the gist, but I just wanted to show you the starting process again. Of course, pick up a big dollop of top coat on your brush and then just do horizontal lines across the middle of the nail. Don't go all the way over. You're trying to channel an animal, not a striped sweater. And like I said, they don't all have to be perfect or uniform. I started to realize that I kind of like some of the thicker ones in the center of the nail and some of the thinner ones closer to my cuticle. I felt like it gave a cool effect. So that's what I started to do. Now it is time for the best time of all the bling time. So of course I did the middle finger on one hand. I'm going to do my pointer finger on this hand. Um, I am using Savorsky crystals for this set. Of course, I'm using my tried and true Honey Nail Secret Gel Gem. Of course, you can see how much I use it. Mine is beat up. I did get a new one. I just wanted to use the last of my product before I open up the new batch. You know, we got to save money. And then I always go in with my top coat as well. So that way, everything is just slipped in there. And then, of course, I do not cure that gem gel or top coat. And I will not cure them until I have my full bling design on my hands i don't remember exactly what sizes i was using i'm pretty sure i was using ss20s which would be the bigger ones and then i believe they're ss12s as the smaller ones and then of course just a big teardrop shape for the big crystal in the middle and then i used a couple of diamond like rhombus shapes I apologize for going in and out of frame when doing this method with the gem gel and the top coat. The crystals always like to slide around, of course, and with me doing not a super big crystal placement, but with a nice crystal design, I have to make sure everything stays in place. So when doing this, I always try to work as fast as I can, fast but diligently. And then, of course, you'll see me moving the crystals around and just sliding them back to the spot that I want them to be in. Because you always want to make sure it's the perfect placement before you cure them in the light. Because, you know, once you cure them, you cannot undo them unless you take the whole design off. But we have officially made it to the end of the video. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. I definitely hope you were able to learn something. Or I was able to give you a little bit of inspo. Of course, I'm going to include pictures and videos of the completed set. If you want to see more fire sets, be sure to follow my Instagram at k.roselle. And if you want to order a fire set for yourself, you can get yourself some press-ons off my website at kroselle.com. Again, thank you so freaking much for watching and I cannot wait to talk to you guys again. I'll see you later. Bye.